<laughs> last night, Jake and I were looking at this and we're like, okay, so it's a quick history of the NSA. So I need to keep that in mind. It's not always been like this. Um, I'm sure that y'all know that um, at one time, loans were closed only in title companies or at the lender. And so we're going to talk about that uh, now as to how things progressed and how we got discovered. Because we have not always been handling signing appointments. There we go. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay, so <clears throat> yeah, that's what I was kind of stumbling around there for. Um, until interest rates begin to fall at the end of the 1990s, there was no need for a mobile notary to go to a home to notarize documents. Um, this was done, like I said, at the local title, title company and mobile notaries. Um, I've heard from the, the old folks in the in the that's been in the business like even longer than I have, I've heard that they were doing closings. I mean, they were doing signings, maybe even in 1990, 91. But the one that told me that lives in Arkansas, very rural, and I can definitely see that she did those kind of things. But um, in 1980, mortgage interest rates, they'll get this, they were 20%. And it, it was almost like very you know, fewer people by far could afford a home. And um, the house payments were so high. You can imagine right now they're at one, one and a half to 4%. And um, you can imagine how, how much that cost. Let's see. And I've, it, you can, all right, here is a little illustration that shows that um, how the, the interest rate went up very high and then it started coming down. Well, guess what? When it started coming down, people wanted to refinance their houses. And so what happened was that um, even at 16% down, when they fell to that, people started to refinance. About this time is when I bought my first house and um, it was in the nineties. And so I think I got 9%. Um, in 99, there was an 8%. Sorry, that's jumping around. Um, there was 8%. And so that was super low. I mean, you know, we've gone from 20% to 8%. And so that's when things went, started rocking. In 2000, um, the title companies could not keep up. And that's when fees for notaries were the best because the title companies were calling bail bondsmen um, who usually have notaries in the office. They would, you know, they comb the phone books for notaries. They call law offices. Anywhere there was a notary, they started asking, um, if, can we mail the, a package to you? And that's what they did. And then you sign it, get it signed up and send it back. And so notaries were making two to 250, you know, 250 was not, it was not unusual. Well, in 2001, um, a smart lady named Susan, who was a notary in California, decided to group up notaries into kind of a common meeting place. And she set up the train and she set up training for them. And she's the one that came upon the phrase signing agent. Um, she set up a website called signingagent.com. And if you're familiar with that, you know that it's the National Notary Association's website now because um, they acquired it. Her association back then was called uh, NASA or National Association of Signing Agents. I was not, a that was before my time. But anyway, Susan sold uh, the business to the NNA, but when she, and when she did that, I think that probably set off the explosion of notary signing agents because <clears throat> the NNA began to market on the radio, um, in the newspaper. I remember getting advertisements at my home and thinking, 
Okay, what is this? Earn money as a notary. I, yeah, uh-huh. I know I can charge $4, but if that was at the time, that's what we could charge. So about 19, uh, about in 2004, NNA's marketing caused many, many notaries to join the force. By 2007, that housing bubble burst, the one that those that were being refinanced and there were many foreclosures and for a while we received a black eye because we were told that you know we there were robo signers involved and I always say this which is probably not true but I always said those people aren't really notaries they really aren't signing agents those people are different than we are and I believe that to this day uh, that those those notaries didn't even know what they had a stamp for but they were just notarizing um, anything that was slid in front of them. And if I, you know, to when they begin to foreclose on houses, it was just a meal. And so anyway, we were kind of, you, you kind of, then you sort of took down all of your advertising and quit, ad, quit talking about your fabulous notary career. And so that brings us, I just wanted to add in here that, Ron started in Virginia, which Ron is remote online notarization. It started in Virginia in 2011. So see, they had a jump on the rest of us about almost 10 years. Okay, this is important. In 2013, the Consumer Protection, the Consumer Finance, Financial Protection Bureau decided that all parties involved in financing loans would be held accountable for making sure that the, the private citizens information like social security, um, date of birth and driver's license all bound up together there, an ID stealer's dream that they would not allow uh, title companies and lenders and anyone who worked for them to just run amok because I mean, there were horror stories like finding um, all that kind of information just dumped out in a dumpster behind the, you know, for pickup or whatever. They were not careful with anybody's info. Well, I'm gonna say there were some offenders that were not care careful. Um, so at that point, and finally in 2013, 2014, right in that area, uh, notaries were then required by um, an organization which kind of went over and said, okay, let's make the rules. And they did for us. And I'll get into that in a minute. They um, required notary signing agents to take an NNA certification course, or not a course, but to uh, be able to pass a certification test. And so that's something that's important that every new signing agent has to do is take that NNA certification. They must get a background check and they must carry uh, 25,000 ENO and adhere to a code of ethics. So I, you know, many notaries found this to be very controlling. They did not like it. They felt like the NNA was out to get us. But what I saw and, I, and I, at that time, I was writing um, for the AAN, which is the NNA's big competitor. But what I saw when they actually, when the powers that be and up the chain, the lenders and title companies put their heads together, came up with a solution to please the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Um, I'm going to let someone in here. What I saw that as was a was an opportunity, and that we were really put on the uh, we were put on the map, so to speak. I just felt like at that point we became somebody who mattered. So, all right, just one second. Okay. In 2014 to 2016, there was a steady growth of NSAs. And then, and during the last few years, we've seen high 
cost courses promising six figures quickly in the income multiply on YouTube. Our landscape fills with notaries who are here for quick money and who are not learning how to be the polished professionals that will make a career out of this. They are just get in there, fill my purse and get out. Um, there are plenty of notary signing agents, but in the last few years, we've seen signing agents that were not dedicated to ethics and best practices. And so that's why we began writing this course. Okay. Okay. The question I just looked at is, will we have these slides? You will have every, in your handout, if you re review that handout notebook, you will find every bit of this is in that notebook. So that is my not so quick history of the US, of, of a notary signing agent and how we came to this point. Um, you have this, like I said, you have these, this information in your handout. You can recap it there if you want to because you can read just as well as I can. But um, I wanted to point this out that when the rates started to fall, consumers stampeded to local banks, as we've said, but that was at the same time that the worldwide market matured, worldwide web matured. And so now, you know, most of y'all were probably in diapers when that happened, but um, you could, you dialed up um, using either AOL or a local ISP, you know, internet provider, dialed it up, heard that little screeching and squawking that your modem made, and then you um, got online, you did a search on Netscape, and then you waited. You went and maybe made a cup of coffee and you came back, and there was a list of lenders. And then, but that really started to gel for people. Um, they began to find their lenders online. And, um, you know, so that, and, and so then lenders, those lenders started using national title companies or, you know, it, it just got kind of crazy. It was a real scramble. And um, it became, I mean, it, it was just a really good deal for notary signing agents at that time. So anyway, I'm going to hand it back over to Jake. Um, Jake, if you can see the screen and want to go ahead and make any mention of this, uh, I know you always have something to say usually about this slide, but I'll just tell you that um, these guys were not the best. I mean, they, I would say AmeriQuest might have been a little bit shady is what I'm saying, but I did many of their loans not you know, I mean, we can't judge that if, if the people want it, then, you know, they want it. Um, but AmeriQuest is the reason that I worked a Saturday, um, excuse me, end of month in Alamo title in Houston quite a bit. Um, them, uh, let's see, I did some quite a bit of co countrywide, but Quicken Loans, I think is the only one that we still got now. So Jake, I am going to stop sharing and allow you to share your screen when you're ready, or you might just want to mention these lenders while I do that. I am ready. Did I stop sharing? Because you know. I believe so. Okay, good deal. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So I will personally say, yes, some of these lenders were shady. Emphasis on were. They're no longer around. Um, when I was a national account manager, uh, I flew to the San Francisco Bay Area uh, uh, two weeks a month. So basically a half a year. For three years, California, the Bay Area was my home. Um, Elon was a client of mine as well as Countrywide. Um AmeriQuest was the other, and then the others are ones that were, you know, national um, book of business where people could go online, as Brenda had mentioned, and start their loan app. Uh, so these guys kind of were the key contributors that really accelerated uh, people closing at their home, and, you know, it was just the new best thing 20 years ago. The only company that's in existence still is Quicken Loans. Um, now, Quicken is not part of the shady crews the rest of these are. Um, in fact, Quicken 
through the hard times, when we had the mortgage crash, and when the rates were really high even before then, Quicken was always competitive, and they were actually the reason why I'm probably here today, because they always had volume. They always had uh, strategies that just seemed to uh, lead the whole pack. Um, but I will tell you, many lenders, I'm sorry, many signing agents will agree with me that if you get the opportunity to close a, or sign up, rather, a Quicken loan, their cream of the crop. They usually are very uh, involved with the process with the uh, homeowner. Uh, so the homeowner is a lot more educated uh, in advance and they usually see the documents in advance. So you'll quickly find that quick in when you have, you're like, oh my gosh, this will be a slam dunk signing. So uh, I do want to give them praise. But as far as the rest of them, they're no longer in existence. Um, AmeriQuest was... Uh, they're not here to defend themselves and we're way past the tort and all the other things where I get in trouble, but they were very, very shady and you can read about them on many articles.